And if you're looking for a jamming good time, you're at the right place at the right time. Inside the pages of Jamaica Magazine. Thanks for joining us. I'm Theodore Henry. In today's edition, we pay tribute to the legend, the gong himself, Robert Nesta Marley, as we celebrate the 70th anniversary of his birth. Happy Earth, strong Bob Marley. Hear more from the Prime Minister later in the show. Plus, training the children in the way they should go, making them financially literate. Stay with us for a show chock full of information and sheer entertainment. Nikki baby, come here. You understand, so I have to send your guy your auntie so you can go to school and turn out better than me. Anyone you know has been a victim of human trafficking, call 811 or 1 888 Protect. Be wise, open your eyes, spot them, stop them. A message brought to you by the National Task Force Against Trafficking in Persons. Good day, I'm Carrie Ann Smith and this is your GIS News for Friday, February 6. More than 3.5 million tourists visited Jamaica in 2014, 230,000 more than in 2013. Tourism Minister Dr. Wicker McNeil says the country recorded steady growth in both cruise shipping and stopover arrivals. We saw growth out of all of our main markets. Stopover arrivals out of Europe grew by 10.7 percent, while arrivals out of Canada increased by 5.2%. Stopover arrivals out of the US grew by 2% overall, with an increase of 5.4% out of the West and 5.6% out of the South. The inflow of visitors from Asia also increased by 9.2%. The minister was speaking at Thursday's post-cabinet media briefing in Montego Bay. He also revealed that gross tourism earnings for the year were estimated to be in excess of a 2.2 billion US dollars, a 5.8% increase over the same period in 2013. The Ministry of Finance and Planning will be completing the necessary paperwork by the end of this fiscal year to ensure that Jamaica gains access to $1.8 billion in grant funding. Co-chairman of the Economic Programme Oversight Committee, Richard Biles, made the disclosure its concerns that tax revenues for April to December 2014 were $9.7 billion below target. For December 2014, revenues and grants also fell by $3.4 billion and expenditure was $2.5 billion above target. The expenditure side, it was explained to us, has to do with the um, uh, health sector rationalization or reclassification program, which is in its third year. So apparently payments were made in December. In the meantime, Tax Administration Jamaica has indicated that tax collections for the month of January were on target. Now that approval has been given for new projects to increase base load electricity supply to the national grid, the electricity sector enterprise team ESET says it will be looking at how to keep prices low for consumers. ESET chairman Dr. Vincent Lawrence says the due diligence will continue with its multilateral partners and the approved projects will be benchmarked with global standards and key performance indicators. We had asked the World Bank for assistance and they are doing some work on this for us to help us to be sure that we are setting the framework for the next 20, 30 years of our electricity sector. Dr. Lawrence says a best practice review of the energy sector should be completed within four to six months. Justice Minister of Senator Mark Golding has responded to concerns about how a Rastafarian is to be defined under the Ganja Law Reform Bill that's now before the Senate. While speaking at a GIS think tank this Tuesday, Minister Golding pointed out that legislation and private bills passed over the years to establish various churches have never attempted to define an individual's religious faith. I don't think it would be a good idea and it's not the norm. 
The legislation now being debated by the Senate gives recognition to persons of the Rastafarian faith and exempts them from penalty for the cultivation and use of ganja as a sacrament. But the Justice Minister says the reform does not soften government's stance on illegal drugs and related criminal activities. It doesn't um, apply as an exemption for dealing in ganja or any of the commercial aspects which are still unlawful in relation to ganja. Health Minister Dr. Fenton Ferguson is urging parents to ensure their children are fully immunized for their age. The minister's appeal comes as the United States and Mexico deal with a measles outbreak. He says that while Jamaica has been very successful in eliminating local transmission of certain vaccine preventable diseases, the health ministry is always mindful of the need to remain vigilant. Dr. Ferguson points out that compulsory vaccines are still being offered at no cost for children in the public health sector. We recognize that even with the no user fee policy and long before the no user fee policy, the vaccine in the public sector was always given free and continue to be so. And therefore, there is no encumbrance relative to payments that one will have to find in order to get their children vaccinated. Minister Ferguson is also appealing to schools, especially at the early childhood level, to be vigilant and to seek to ensure children are fully immunized for their age. Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller has commended the University of the West Indies for a new $4 billion teaching and research complex. Established at the UE Mona's Faculty of Medical Sciences, it houses the university's new dental program. Mrs. Simpson Miller says the complex will enhance the national and regional capacity for scientific technology and knowledge. This is a major investment, not only in the future of the university and the faculty, but also in the human capital of Jamaica and the Caribbean region. And finally, the Prime Minister has responded to the death of wheelchair-bound Marlon King, who was struck by a bus on Tuesday. At the National Road Safety Council's first meeting of the year, Mr. Simpson Miller asserted that all road users had a responsibility to look out for others using the streets, especially the disabled. To increase awareness, the Prime Minister asked the council to ramp up its education and enforcement campaign. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Carrie Ann Smith. Thanks for watching. Let's celebrate Jamaica to the world. Fastest man in the world. First Jamaican woman to win gold in Olympic 100 meter sprint. An upcoming global superstar. Mouth watering meals. And a vibrant set of people. We are Jamaicans. Let's get together and bring back the love. We're saluting reggae royalty on Jamaica Magazine today, the 70th anniversary of the birth of Bob Marley. Let's listen in on a message from Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller. I join all Jamaicans and many persons from around the world in celebrating the 70th anniversary of the birth of the Honorable Robert Nesta Marley, O.M. It is fitting that Jamaica is celebrating Bob Marley's 70th birthday at the same time that we are observing Reggae Month under the theme, The Journey is the Destination. As we reflect on the amazing journey of reggae music over the years, we are mindful that in keeping with our history, we must get up, stand up for our rights. But Marley was a musical giant whose voice in the wilderness rang out loud and strong during a very difficult time in our national and global journey. He encouraged us to be strong as a people, singing the well-known anthem of resilience, no woman, no cry. He assured the peoples of the world that every little thing is gonna be all right. The legendary Bob Marley represents us as a people of great strength, endless talent, creative genius, and advocates against oppression and injustice. 
Bob Marley's philosophies live on among us. His music has remained the eternal conscience of our nation and the world, teaching us the glorious history of the black race, encouraging us to overcome our struggles, making us uncomfortable with poverty and injustice, and urging us to correct these ills. So much of Bob Marley's work continues to carry the profound message of national hero, the right excellent Marcus Mosiah Garvey, who taught us that a people without the knowledge of their past history, origin, and culture is like a tree without roots. As a global icon, Bob Marley transcended local issues. He was an international Buffalo soldier, but one rooted in what has come to be known as Jamaican liberty. That uplifting way of being, which is uniquely Jamaican, and had always been the inspiration for his positive message music. Voices of the World continue to sing Marley's prolific work until this very day. This demonstrates reggae music's role as a balm that heals our souls, the pulsating beat in the fight against oppression, poverty, and the sweet drum, bass, and melody that enrich our culture and give global prominence to our language and our way of life. Today, I pay tribute to Bob Marley, his family, and all our reggae ambassadors. Let us remember the foundation message of the music in the immortal words of Robert Nestor Marley. One love, one heart, let's get together and feel all right. Happy birthday to the gong. Happy Earth Strong Bob Marley. One love. I'm often asked the value of reggae music and the value of Bob Marley to Jamaica and Jamaica's tourism. And I will say it's immeasurable. It's not something that you can put a figure to. Bob Marley, in his short life, really accomplished some things. And it's interesting. Um, today I looked at some of the things. And just to see that a person could be awarded in 1978, the Peace Medal of the Third World from the United Nations. In 1994, to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. In 1999, to get the Album of the Century for Exodus by Time Magazine. In 2001, to get a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame and be awarded a Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award. Rolling Stones has ranked him number 11 on their list of the 100, 100 greatest artists of all time. And One Love has been named the song of the millennium. This is not the achievement of an ordinary person. And we must give credit to him for all that he has achieved. What made Bob great is the extent of his lyrics. He spoke about things that touch the lives of the common man. He spoke about revolution. He spoke about liberation. And these are timeless values. And I see it again in some of our young artists that this trend continues. We at the Ministry of Tourism and Entertainment have a debt to pay, not just to Bob, but all our artists who keep our flame flying high. On the anniversary of his 70th birthday, I just want to say to all those involved, to the family, to the foundation, keep the work going. 
we will work with you to keep the message of Bob Marley going across the world because it's a message that keeps Brand Jamaica and shows what is the best of Brand Jamaica. Switching gears now. Just recently, the Ministry of Education entered into a partnership with Money Basics for Kids Limited to teach children just that, the basics of money management. The initiative dubbed Taking Charge of the Financial Future of Youth in Jamaica will also make children more financially literate. Here are some highlights. The project Taking Charge of the Financial Future is timely as the Ministry of Education is currently assessing literacy and numeracy levels among children in the grade, grade 4 age cohort. The Financial Literacy Program complements the Junior Achievement Program that provides primary level students with exposure to business practice and the Ministry hopes that the infusion of financial information into the school curriculum will redound to the personal benefit of students and teachers alike. You can infuse the basics of money literacy, financial literacy, money management into every single subject. Our national agenda, entire goals as we move forward to develop Jamaica is all intertwined in the objectives of this initiative. Project taking charge of the financial future of youth in Jamaica is at, at the, literally at the cost of developing uh, more fiscally responsible young individuals, not just for today but also for tomorrow. And it is an investment that we know will be worth it. And as the ministry seeks to improve the money management skills of students, we too as parents and guardians can play our part. Consider this scenario. Dad, can you please buy me some ice cream cake and peanuts when we get to the supermarket? Matthew, I don't have the money to buy all those things for you now. The money I have is to buy you snacks for next week and to buy some other things for the house. All right. All right, all right, hear what, hear what. Let's make a deal. I'll give you $500 and you buy all the snacks you want, okay? That sounds great. All right. Ooh, snacks, can we go there? Yeah, you have everything you want? Yeah. All right. Your total is $958.18. Dad? Okay, I'll put some stuff back. Dad, I didn't realize that's how money works. I'm glad you realized, so now you know what to do next time. That's a recurring theme between parents or guardians and the little ones. A multitude of wants, but not enough money to fulfill them children have to get the basic concept clear. Money is earned. And when you've worked for that, and you've earned that, then, then, then the child can assimilate the fact that, okay, I must spend it wisely. Then and only then will children learn about the importance and value of money. When using an automated banking machine, ABM, ensure the machine is in a location you are comfortable with. And when you enter, be sure to close the door. Examine the machine before you insert your debit card. And never enter your card if the machine has a suspicious device attached to it. More important, don't allow strangers to assist you in conducting a transaction. And remember, treat your debit card like cash. Keep it in a safe place. A firm grasp of mathematics can also help students to budget their money wisely. After all, math counts. But mathematics is also a gateway to science. Check out some of the initiatives on the way to help the youngsters develop a love for math.
not liking maths, then you can just say goodbye to any of these professions. Claims adjuster, chemist, engineer, sociologist, even nurse. Welcome to another week of School Zone. I'm Tamara McHale, and today we give you highlights of the Ministry of Education Maths Expo, held under the theme Math Revolution Equal Economic Solution. <laughs> There was an even more serious goal to the day's activities. We want you to see the different career opportunities and to set your goals to qualify yourselves in mathematics so that you can be gainfully employed in Jamaica and elsewhere in the globe. And that's exactly what happened as captivated students listened to presenters sharing the importance of mathematics in various professions. It doesn't matter where in the world you are, what subjects you like, or what, you, what decision you, you have to make, math is the first thing that you have to consider. There was even one presenter from as far as Singapore, the country which ranks the best in mathematics and science globally, according to results from the trends in international mathematics and science study. Mathematics in Singapore is different. There's a new methodology in mathematics. Okay, we call it the CPA concept, concrete, pictorial, and abstract. Along with it, we have uh, methodologies like the bar modeling. It's used widely now. We have spread the word across the world. In the CPA method, you move from actual objects around you, concrete, then you create pictures, pictorial, and the final stage is using math symbols to connect it all, abstract. This helps students picture numbers and sizes in their minds so they can work out mathematical equations. With the help of 32 exhibitors, 6,000 students from 200 schools across the island, maybe even yours, got to working it out. Ten gram pieces, and the aim of the ten of, of, of the seven pieces cut from, come from a square, and they are supposed to design to create those designs that you see out there by combining the shapes. Vertical movement and the, the horizontal movement just by looking counting and this we went to the what's this to the right so it's positive and went up so that is also positive so it's six over six which is one so the gradient is positive one yes. y equals x plus one. one. I'm I'm very elated. I'm 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 thinking that. The Ministry of Education is now heading in, in the right direction. This math expo, I must say it was rather fun and interesting. That the CXC exam is coming up, it's very beneficial because we can learn a lot from this. It's always an easier way to math, there's an easier way to look at it and you can relate the strategies to things in daily life. For example, the lady was talking about algebra and she was saying that you could look on, on algebra as dressing up, so you would put on one garment at a time. And when you realize it is really simple, you're just like everyday life. It is a wonderful program to be, be in because it helps you to get some form of income. It helps you to experience a lot of things, more experience in your work, development, punctuality, patience as well, using your initiatives, um, creativity, persistence, um, the drive to go on. The best program I see so far right now in Jamaica. It has done a lot of things to the young youths like me right now. CSJP has been a, a main breadwinner for me. That's where I get my bread and stuff like that. That's where I get experience, I get to know other people and stuff like that. The Citizen Security and Justice Program, CSJP, an initiative of the Ministry of National Security, promoting positive values and attitudes while empowering unattached youth in volatile communities. Parents, make sure the children get immunized. Hear this! 
Immunization, it is a must This is not a joke thing, this you can trust It is required by law for entry to nursery to daycare and to schools Listen up, it is necessary to prevent diseases Such as the measles, the poliomyelitis The locked jaw and the whooping cough Immunize your kids, keep them healthy, keep them strong Prevent deadly diseases such as mumps, rubella and diphtheria Immunize your child today Immunization, a key to good health A message from the Ministry of Health and PAHO That's how we close today's edition of Jamaica Magazine. Thanks for spending time with us. So what's your plan for tomorrow? Well, I suggest you complete your weekend rituals, watch Jamaica Magazine on this station, and check out the free concerts tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. at the waterfront in downtown Kingston as we celebrate the 70th anniversary of the birth of reggae legend Bob Marley. In addition, you may also browse our website jis.gov.jm and send your feedback on our social media platforms. I'm Theodore Henry. Have a great weekend. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.